Here at the Rideshare Guy, we have been sharing with you all of the different opportunities that drivers have to get some government assistance. We can get uh, unemployment, we can get an extra $600 a week, we can get a $1,200 stimulus check, we can apply for a $10,000 EIDL grant. We've made videos about all of these things. For some drivers though, if you happen to have gotten sick, you were able to get some money or at least try to get some money from Uber and Lyft and some of the other companies in, in sick pay. And recently, uh, Uber expanded the policy to include not only people that actually get sick, but people that have pre-existing conditions, therefore they really shouldn't be out there risking their health. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the details of this new policy. And stick around. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you my uh, honest opinion about this policy. Hey everybody, it is Jay Crater with the Ride Share Guy. And yes, the illness. The illness is impacting everybody. And um, I wrote an article recently and I said, we're all like fishermen, right? Fishermen, fisherwomen. We're out there like throwing a bunch of things in the water, right? Bait, baiting our, our hooks and you know, we got the stimulus thing and we got the $600 thing and we got the unemployment thing and we got the EIDL, the $10,000 grant thing. And then there's another thing called PPP, Payment Payroll Protection Program, which I'm going to investigate that next. So there's lots of things that we can uh, be, be efficient for. Well, if you happen to have gotten sick, um, uh, Uber, Lyft, and some other companies have provided an opportunity for you to apply for some, some level of sick pay. Well, that policy for Uber recently changed, and that's what we're going to cover in this video. Let's start with driver outcry. So we know of just a few drivers that have actually been able to navigate uh, all of the requirements that Uber has uh, dropped in front of us in order to get the sick pay. And uh, what we hear a lot more is of drivers that have applied, but they have not been able to get anything. They've been denied. In fact, worse than being denied, they've been deactivated for sure, and then denied. So uh, even though Uber has says they've, they've spent, they've spent uh, $3 million so far, that's just a very little bit of money compared to all of the drivers uh, and especially all the drivers that actually have gotten sick. So uh, what you're seeing right now is a, a good example of what we're talking about. Uh, this is one of our subscribers and he actually showed that uh, Uber denied him uh, even when uh, he had a, a doctor's letter clearly stating that he was sick. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of thing that makes drivers so frustrated because you know you do exactly what you're asked to do and you still you don't get what you, what you were promised. Number two, so what's the new policy? Well, the new policy says either if you're sick, right, you can get this uh, now revised sick pay amount, or if you have a pre-existing condition, something that makes you uh, uh, if you were to get sick, it could actually really, you know, threaten your life. And what you're seeing right here is Uber switches course, adds drivers with pre-existing conditions to sick leave pay. And then it's interesting, the subtitle says, there were things we just got wrong, the ride-hailing company admits, in reference to its initial response to the coronavirus pandemic. So yeah, so they're acknowledging there's been, you know, this is something they should have thought about, that putting people who have pre-existing conditions on the road um, is really risking their life. Even people that are healthy are dying from this thing. But people with pre-existing conditions, at least now they can stop driving and get a little bit of money. And I'm going to cover how much money in just a second. But if we look now at the Uber website, we can see the uh, verbiage that they use. It says, uh, applying under this new policy, uh, you have an active case of, of the illness. Uh, you are individually ordered to self-quarantine because you're suspected to have an active case. Or, this is the new part, 
you were individually ordered to self-quarantine because you have pre-existing health conditions that put you at a higher risk of serious illness due to the uh, illness. And then there are instructions for how you apply. And I'll, again, I'll cover exactly how much that is in a second because that's a big part of the story. So number three, what else can you do, right? So driving for Uber and Lyft, you're driving people around, this is a high, high risk, okay? Whether you have a pre-existing condition or not, you don't know if somebody's sick for the first couple of days that they're actually sick, they're contagious, you can get it, boom. So what else can you do? Well, we're really, really hot on Instacart right now. Instacart is just hiring a lot of people. More and more people are ordering their groceries from home and they need people to shop and they need people to go and deliver it. And we're hearing of people that are making over $2,000 a week uh, working for Instacart, all right? So below this uh, video, there's a link to uh, Instacart to apply if you haven't applied yet. And if you're a driver and you gotta keep working, this is where you wanna go because you're, you're still out with the public, but not so much. You're not putting 10 to 15 people in your car every single day. You're dropping groceries off. Usually you just put them on the porch. You don't have any interaction with people. And uh, it's a great way to still make money because the demand is so high because so many people are staying at home. Right. Okay, number four, let's get to the meat of this thing. How much money can you make uh, in, in sick pay? Well, we have one uh, driver and you see his correspondence here in front of you. Uh, he was able to get in sick pay with the old, the old policy over $2,000. Um, it was possible uh, previously to, to make a, you know, a decent amount to cover you for the two weeks. So again, this is um, estimated that you're out of, out of action for two weeks, for 14 days. And uh, that's the kind of money you could have gotten uh, prior. Now, with the new policy, um, they have set, Uber has set maximum amounts that they will pay depending on the market that you live in. And when I looked at these figures, I got to say I was, I was surprised at how low they are. So let's take a look at that right now. So what you're seeing is uh, what, they're, what Uber is providing on their website. So if you work in Los Angeles and you qualify for the maximum amount, you're only going to get $459. $459 for 14 days of work. That's like 30 dollars a day. So that means if you work a regular eight hour day, that's like four dollars an hour. And then let's <laughs> let's look at these other two markets. This is pretty crazy. Columbus, Ohio, you're only going to get $244. That's supposed to cover you for four, 14 days for two weeks of work. And Rio Grande Valley, Texas, 136. That's the maximum. Of course, I wanted to find out what the maximum is in San Francisco, but I couldn't find that information. Um, I guess I would have to call Uber support um, and, and ask. But Los Angeles is a pretty good, pretty good indicator. The amounts are really, really small. Um, they're really, really small. So the, the program has changed. More people can qualify, um, although it's, that's still gonna be a challenge, I am sure. Um, and the amount you're gonna make goes from a, a guy made $2,000 to now that amount is like uh, a quarter of that. So what are the key takeaways here? Well, first key takeaway is if you're not sick, you don't have to worry about this at all, right? Um, if you don't wanna be sick and you still wanna drive, go drive for uh, Instacart or go work for Instacart. The biggest takeaway I have though is that I really get the sense with Uber that they're always thinking with their head and not with their heart. You know, they, they could be taking a nice positive stand for, the, for their drivers, for the people that are getting sick, for the people that have these, uh, you know, that are, um, shouldn't be driving because of pre-existing conditions. And, and, and instead they're just, they, they're, they're thinking in terms of how, how can we minimize the amount of money that we spend, right? They had to have had this corporate little discussion and say, you know, this, this policy is kind of backfiring. Um, we're, we're getting some bad press. So let's now say we're going to expand it to more people. 
And in the fine print, we're going to really, really lower the amount. I mean, come on, $459 for two weeks of work in Los Angeles? You know, so it's a corporate move. And uh, it just, for me, just sh it just um, shows the character of, of Uber. It's not really out there to help the drivers. It's out there to cover their ass and make sure they spend as little money as possible. And on top of that, they're not paying anything in terms of unemployment. We, the taxpayers, are paying our own unemployment so that we can get money from the government. Think about that. Uber and Lyft are just getting off scot-free, right? The taxpayers are paying the unemployment for the drivers. So even in addition to that, they still uh, have spent, what, $3 million so far? That's just nothing compared to what's required. So those are my key takeaways. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, subscribe. My name is Jay Crater. I want to say thank you very much for uh, watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up. And, um, and uh, that helps the algorithm so that more people can see the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Join our team and we'll keep you up to date on everything uh, as we learn uh, about this illness and the different ways uh, we can get money into the driver's pockets through all these uh, government assistance programs. Y'all go ahead and have a great day and be safe.